Hi, this is Jeremy Bryden for Chorus Chord Software Solutions. Today we'll be talking about how the Ragdoll models are imported from Photoshop into my game client. So Ragdolls are just the uh, two-dimensional bipedals, so human-like objects that are created in my game, where if you go ahead and click your left mouse button, uh, a couple of little dudes are created. You could zoom in, you could see that they've got two legs, two arms. Uh, if you go into the wireframe model view, you could really see that they're uh, very body-like. It's kind of cool because they interact with the world pretty well, and uh, that's all thanks to Box2D being a pretty good physics simulator. Um, so yeah, so what I mean by importing uh, a biped is, is that to create a new biped, so in essence to create a new character in the game, you have to use uh, a basic image, and you have to define special coordinates on those images, so you have to define um, which parts of the image are which parts of the body. Uh, I define a body in this game as... Um, 13 specific little sprites. So you've got the the head, the chest, the uh, waist, then you've got two parts for the arm, so the upper arm, lower arm, and then two other, or excuse me, three other parts for the legs, upper, lower, and then also the foot. Uh, so the hard part is how do you connect these, and then where do you define the joints? Uh, because not only do each body parts um, have joints, but each joint also has uh, certain degrees of freedom, so for example, um, the arms can't necessarily go 360 degrees in all angles in a two-dimensional uh, world. They can only rotate about mm, about 180 degrees. So what I do in my application is, is that we take some very simple coordinates. We take um, 13 coordinates which define the origins of the bodies. So by this, I don't mean at all origins in terms of where the image starts or where uh, the joints should start. All it means is these 13 coordinates just define some pixel within the uh, biped chunks. So there's 13 of these, one for each of the chunks. And in my algorithm, we go ahead and uh, seek out the entire size of the chunk for each of these 13 chunks. So we'll take a, or an originating pixel, so we'll just say the center excuse me, the center of the chest, and we'll do a flood fill algorithm on the alpha channel, meaning we only look at pixels that aren't invisible. Uh, from there, we figure out what the max, min, and max, sorry, we figure out the min and max for the x and y axis, so in essence, we figure out the exact size of each chunk, um, and we put it in a bounding box. So we don't find exactly what the shape of the chunk is, we just find roughly what's the best rectangle that we could fit it in. From there, we use that as our physics model when we're trying to do collision detection. Uh, and then when we want to figure out where to connect the joints, we look at another configuration file which does contain joint data. If there's any joints that aren't defined, so for each joint we have to define um, the parents, so which chunk are we supposed to connect to. Uh, and then also we have to define the rotation, so we know to connect the arm to the chest, but where do we actually rotate the arm on the chest? Um, so we define those two coordinates, and uh, within the same configuration file, we define the limitations of these joints. And it's actually a very simple configuration file. All it is is just uh, a series of key data strings, meaning you've got a key, so L underscore forearm uh, suggests that we're going to define forearm positions. And then the data is just a series of integers here. Um, in terms of optimization, what will happen is, is that if we don't define a point, it'll go ahead and assume that it's, depending on the context, it'll go ahead and assume that it's either on the center x-axis, either on the very top or on the bottom, depending on if we're trying to attach it to a parent or if we're trying to rotate it. Uh, and then we also make some other assumptions that um, each chunk is roughly rectangular. So I mentioned earlier that rectangles aren't necessarily the best example of a shape that we could use for collision detection. I'll show that in a minute. Um, but for now, it's the best we could do. In the future, we could try and optimize it. So as an example, I'm gonna make a really quick top hat for uh, this little dude. Uh, I'm not an artist by any means. Uh, if you ask any of my friends, I'm actually horribly terrible at drawing. <laughs> um, you'll see that in a second. So right now I made a little top hat for the character. It's not even in scale. We'll go ahead and save the image. We're not going to change any configuration files. In terms of collision models, uh, we pick up all of that uh, within the system through my little flood fill algorithm. We'll go ahead and create a couple of new characters. When we zoom in, you'll actually see that these characters now have the hats that I drew in Photoshop. 
And when you zoom in, you'll see that there's a new bounding box. So not only are the things drawn uh, to the latest model, but also um, the collision models have been updated. If we take off the Z, uh, excuse me, if we take off the collision data and we create a bunch of new characters, you'll see that it's actually kind of cool to, to see these little robots rain down with uh, top hats. Uh, and again, I mentioned earlier that the collision models aren't necessarily the best um, because you'll see that these hats actually, yeah, there, there's a few issues. Box2D assumes that the density of the objects is consistent. So hats in reality have a lot of open space, uh, especially top hats. Uh, Box2D unfortunately doesn't know that. So you'll see a lot of these items are uh, top heavy, even though they shouldn't be in any way. Um, but it's still really cool to see these things working. Um, I'm not a great programmer by any stretch of the means. Uh, I'm just really, really happy that I'm able to see this actually working so well with Photoshop and Blender and these other third party tools that I've been trying to integrate with the project. So that's Jeremy Bryden. If uh, you want to contact me, just hit me up at jbryden uh, at coreS2.com.